There once was a man named Sweeney who somehow spilled gin on his weenie. Just to be cool, he added vermouth and slipped his hot data martini. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That's a good I'm one. Aware. <laughs> <laughs> but, but where's the racism? I thought there was going to be blatant racism. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, now I don't even remember what that was. Oh, oh, oh! It was a, it was, it was the end. Of the day. It was black culture or black history month. No, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle, Kyle! It's Mardi Gras. Show me, show me up. What? 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 All right. Let's all get right. some king cake, baby. Yeah. Uh, oh. All right, folks. I'm taking over. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Between the Rolls, our Murder Hobo Inc. attempt at a talk show. A uh, pretty good attempt. At all right, show. Carol. I can't do it anymore. I'm sorry. Ha! I never hear. That. Ready? Da, da, da. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Just a reminder this is for mature audiences only because, as I like to say, someone has to be because it certainly ain't these guys. Um, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube for all the archives. Uh, you know, if you like our merchandise, I don't know if anyone's actually wearing it any night, but it's it's good stuff in spite of what Frank says. He always calls it crap. I've got I, I the, the murder, murder hobo, hobo nipple ring right here. Can you see that? <laughs> and I have the Ben Wobbles inserted. Oh, <laughs> those were new. Are they nice? I found them to be a little lopsided. Well, but. that's only because the left one does tend to hang lower. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, so our merch is at tinyurl.com slash RPG swag. And coming soon, we're actually working on a Discord channel. Even though Frank, I think, tried to spoil it the other night when it certainly isn't ready. So we're going to go around the board so everybody can tell us who you are. Uh, I will start with the person to my left and our newest. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why you decided He's to come below and you, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> He's not to your left. He's below you. No, I screwed up the cameras. <laughs> no, I've got it. I've got it right here. I can see it. So, David, you are to my left. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay. Is that stage left or stage right? <laughs> stage left. Exit, even. <laughs> well, my name is David. Uh, apparently, I lost a bet, according to Frank, so that's why I was on last week's episode. Um, yeah, I've been a longtime fan of the show, uh, a whole three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, no, I loved the show. Had a great time last week, and yeah, I'm here to talk about it. Excellent. And then below me would be Blake. Blake, who are you? Even though I said who you are. And what else would you like to say? Pussy Blake. farts. What? <laughs> <laughs> of course. And uh, I, I, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, I'll do some steers. Yeah, I'm Blake. Uh, probably recognize me as that dickhead from almost all of the rest of these things. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's not Kyle. Uh, coming up on, sh shit, almost two, over two years playing with Frank. I haven't done one of those jokes in a while, and you know how much he loves it when I say I play with Frank. <laughs> it's mostly the feather boas he loves, though. They do well, so well. That and the writing crop. I had to buy that special. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, we just, uh, I did not watch the show on Saturday because I forgot that I didn't play Thanks. <laughs> I was actually gonna. I was gonna tell you to explain that too, but yeah. I mean, you play like almost every week, and it's you actually had a night off. I know. That's why. I did, that's the other reason I didn't watch it because a night off is a night off. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I actually had to watch the show today because I was away all weekend. And last but not least is Kyle, or should I say, Bearded Carol, because he likes to refer to himself that way. No, no, it says Kyle. What's what are you talking about, Carol? <laughs> you have a list of vendettas against these people here on the show. Even poor David, who's never talked to you once, and you're just insulting people left and right. I find it 
horrible. I yeah, can't actually think of the word because I don't have my dictionary in front of me. But you're a terrible person, Carol. Carol. Oh, I know. Just like <laughs> okay. anytime, Carol. Yeah. You just chat, chat away. Okay. What was your question? I forgot. Who the hell are you? Uh, what would you All like right. So for those of you playing Murder Hobo Bingo, that's three shots. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that should be a oh, thing. You're very <laughs> I'm Kyle, um, uh, uh, a longtime player of Dungeons and Dragons for three years now. And I give good advice, which is why Frank can't keep me off his show, despite the fact that I fuck everything up as much as possible. And uh, I was supposed to be running last Saturday's thing, but unfortunately some things came up. So I didn't watch it either. <laughs> that's right that means i'm the one who watched it and david's the one who played so it'll make the next segment rather so yeah let's just talk to david we don't need to hear your half of it I, I'm gonna <laughs> make some crates. let me know when you're done <laughs> so and before before we get to that i suppose i should introduce myself huh of course he'll probably talk over me hi i'm carol I am a longtime player. Uh, you know, my definition of long time is vastly different than Kyle's because I've been playing for about 30 years. Uh, I occasionally GM. And my, of course, my other thing I do is I paint. Mi I'm the other mini painter on the stream. Uh, obviously, Chris is the first mini painter that was here, and his work is free, just fantastic. Um, so, and tonight I get to be host, so they can all talk over me whenever they want. Won't this be fun? Um, so, Carol, yeah. you're better than that. You're not a host. Uh, oh, host, host. Uh, I am so <laughs> I got a little earwax in there. I'm the hostess with the mostest. But I'm the hostess with the moistest. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! And I just came back, as I mentioned, I just came back from a con, um, from Total Confusion Gaming Con, where I spent most of the weekend uh, running a mini painting table and playing some games at night, which were so much fun. But now I'm like half, I'm still recovering. So we'll see if we can, my voice lasts through this show. All right. So and that's why we're here for standby, honey. Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. So, or, or, or more like, I'm going to have to yell over them so my voice will die even faster. So the first part, as always, is going to be the recap of our show from last Saturday. Now, as Blake said, he didn't watch it because he kind of forgot he didn't play. And Kyle caught a little beginning of it, so it really doesn't count. So that <laughs> David, you're going to have to do the recap because you're the player and I can do the view because I watched it today. Okay. So take it away. What happened? All right. Well, last episode, I believe what was episode 75 uh, called Sortie Survey. And close. It close? says Survey Sortie, but close enough. Oh, okay. So <laughs> um, basically, uh, uh, three adventurers show up in uh, a bog town and um, we procure a mission uh, from a person that was supposed to be the mayor that was uh, quite flatulent and uh, had an aroma, couldn't tell whether it was the bog or them. Uh, let's see, Frank as a DM thought it would be fun to put us up in a hotel called The Septic and food and drink at a place called The Tank. So, so anyway. Oh my gosh, Frank! I'm sorry. I have this idea. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> oh wait, can I find it real fast? Uh, an inn called the Horseshoe Road Inn. The Horseshoe Road Inn. Nice. <laughs> uh, okay, that's it. <laughs> good. That's good. Yeah. So anyway, Drink, we got Drink. into some shenanigans up at the uh, at the tank and. Um, the next day, we set out on a mission. Uh, we had to cross through a bog, and uh, I played Erwin the Druid, who thought it would be a good idea to shape into wild shape without telling his buddies, and it was a crocodile. So, yeah, Scott played that really well. <laughs> who, who got some new boots? 
Actually, the Druid did. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. Oh, man. Uh, so uh, after crossing the bog, uh, we had one encounter. Uh, our monk uh, encountered a snake. And uh, yeah, the Druid didn't have uh, animal friendship uh, prepared. So, <laughs> so needless to say, a, a little... Um, little encounter ensued so <laughs> and the druid got a new uh, got got the snake skin for some boots or a hat or something <laughs> yeah it wasn't specified but i do remember the list of options oh yeah and the shock on their faces you know it's just like uh this is a druid <laughs> so <laughs> so anyway uh after that we um continued further i think uh we spotted two structures uh one turned out to be some kind of tower that we investigated uh, ran into uh some problems trying to scale the tower a gnome ended up falling on top of the female orc barbarian's face so that no mish rape oh pretty much <laughs> and i'm gonna say repeatedly <laughs> that seemed to be the theme for the evening anyway um yeah the term butt face came up a lot so <laughs> but uh yeah so uh there was a counter uh encounter within the tower uh with a bone naga and again that ended up with somebody landing on <laughs> poor gwen's face <laughs> uh at that time it was scott so yeah, whose character's name was David, by the way. So that didn't get confused, confusing at all. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, so the encounter um, pressed on. Uh, Erwin showed his bravery by bugging out of there <laughs> during the encounter. Uh, everybody it else was. Better hobo fashion, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, we all follow, they all followed suit out of there. We ended up camping for the night. Um, yeah, uh, one area that we surveyed uh, had two cliffs and stairs that came down from the sides of the cliffs. Anyway, during the night, there were two figures that came out that uh, one of us spotted on watch. Uh, turns out to be that they were two were rats. One didn't make it off the cliff. It fell and kind of splatted. Uh, the other uh, showed up and our intrepid druid moonbeam him, knocked him out of shapeshift form. And it turned out to be a tabaxi, a tabaxi bard. That, uh, yeah, just um, totally shit wrecked our whole encounter pretty much. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Scott ended up getting infuriated with its attitude. Um, Why did he do? What pushed him over the edge, man? What pushed the, him over the edge? The thing that sent him over the edge was that during the encounter, I ended up uh, uh, casting produce flame and basically burning all the hair off the poor tabaxi. <laughs> uh, Scott's character, who was a drunken monk, who was actually really drunk, it wasn't an act, um, felt guilty about it and gave uh, the tabaxi his robes. Those of you playing Murder Hobo Bingo, that's three more shots. <laughs> <laughs> so the tabaxi showed his, uh, his gratitude by pissing on Scott's robes. You got it. And the mayhem ensued. Mentioned. I know he really wanted that mentioned. I think he was proud of that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, yeah, it, it was um, a lot of fun to be had. <laughs> uh, I think we were running out of time, so we cut to like our final encounter. We had a choice of where to go, and uh, we chose the forest. And there we ran into uh an owlbear as the big bad for that encounter and again the druid didn't tell anybody that he wild shaped and frank said <laughs> scott was too drunk to recognize the were dingo in front of him and yeah so attack the dingo so so yeah. who was bleeding at the time oh that would that would be me oh, okay <laughs> i was gonna say were, were you well were you playing a female character no, no. So, oh, probably wasn't you then. 
Yeah, um, no, 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 because yeah. only only Menzies attracts those. <laughs> it's a fact. In fact, uh, you should be drinking about five shots now. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Are we keeping track? Yep. Anything so, else? Uh, aside from killing the owlbear and ruining the orchard that was inside this forest, yeah, our intrepid droid, uh, yeah, uh, people were really questioning his alignment <laughs> by the end of the by the end of the episode. So, I don't think it's so much your alignment they were questioning. I think it was more like questioning. How are you a druid when you blow up orchards and you? <laughs> and what I you keep do? explaining this whenever whenever anyone makes fun of Ernie. Fire is of the earth. It's an element. <laughs> right, you know, if the people fun. in Australia had been setting fires, they wouldn't have the crazy wildfire burning down their country. <laughs> Control burn people. It's a thing. Yeah, and add insult to send injury your to hate that mail statement. to Frank <laughs> right. at Murder Hobo Hink. <laughs> But um, I don't think, um, but I think burning all the trees down is a rather uh, not a druidic thing to do. Uh, or no, no, you got to burn the stuff on the forest floor. The big trees will survive. That, that, that way the, the, the new saplings can, can, can actually get the light that they need to grow. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> Carol, well, actually, it wasn't, it, it wasn't fire. Actually, I uh, thunder waved the orchard. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, no, I can't help you then. You're, you're a terrible murder hobo, David. <laughs> no, thunder is also nature. He's a really good murder hobo. <laughs> He's not a great druid. But that to happen. <laughs> on the show uh, I put down a few notes as a viewer uh, things I really dug I will say this your red the, the spell where you had the red dot oh the minor illusion later a uh, laser pointer for the tabaxi yeah, that totally made me laugh and I said I'm at work so I can't laugh loudly <laughs> um, yeah but face yeah but face in the p rooms that's that was the one of the notes that was sent to me but it makes sense Oh yeah. yeah or Gwen. All right. So I said bad dice rolls because you guys had the worst. I mean, I thought I had bad dice rolls lately. No, Not I'm more cursed. <laughs> you guys, you guys as a team had the worst dice rolls, and that's why she kept getting a face full of butt every. <laughs> it's. Um, I said, yeah, cats are assholes. I mean, that you know they are. We love them, but but they are, and I actually. Uh, I think I would have done exactly what Scott did. I would have gone after that little shit and made him <laughs> for, for, you know, and punished him for, you know, being just such a dick. Um, and it's the other thing that, that and Gwen said this too, you know, bad dice rolls. Um, she, she was absolutely right. They do make things more entertaining, especially when Frank is the GM and he can ex pull something really funny out of the situ situation. <coughs> Sorry, he certainly did. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, maybe we need to have a murder hobo uh, uh, between the roles where Frank explains how he is just so freaking good at pulling. Did you not episodes. watch all of our murder hobo uh, uh, between the roles in January, where we discussed nothing but <laughs> how to come up with shit on the fly? <laughs> <laughs> the fly. I mean, but uh, I don't think it ever focused on comedy. In particular, and he's that's admittedly he's just he's really good at making up really comedic picks. That's that's the thing about this podcast is we really are it's we're the calm princes I think of TNT out there. So um, is there anything else anyone wants to say about the episode? I enjoyed it as a viewer. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought a lot happened too. I, I now, now that it's been described, I plan on actually going back and watching it instead of just saying I did. I hope you, you guys, do. <laughs> you guys really should. It was it was worth listening yeah, to. Well, no, no, and I, and, I, and I do mean that genuinely. It does sound like one that I would enjoy. Oh yeah, <laughs> it it was so it was really funny and. Um, I love Gwen. I hope someday they actually get a chance to play with her too. Um, she was, oh, she took everything in stride and in spite of fact her dice rolls kept biting her. Although I did realize too that she might have been forgetting one of her bonuses on her damage because it seemed really, really low. And I'm glad Scott caught that and pointed it out too because I was wondering that myself. You know, three points of damage just... Just doesn't seem right for a for a barbarian. 
Yeah, especially wheeling the two-handed. Yeah, uh, it, I feel like she might have still been missing something, but that's okay. It all worked out, and it was all fun. And if you miss things, you just just you just roll with it. You just go on, and it's no big yeah. deal. As long as everyone has fun, that's all that matters. Yeah. I mean, for my first experience with the group, I mean, it was awesome. I had a great time. Gwen was great. Scott, Scott, Scott was amazing. Be <laughs> drunk. Did. Man, you could smell it over the camera. <laughs> I listen to the I listen to the episodes because I'm at work, so I can't really watch them. Watch them. So I didn't notice when not Scott was. He does that a lot. He tends to drink a bit when he's playing on Saturdays. And he's just more funny because he works hard and he's allowed to play hard. Lay Gosh, on. come on, Carol. <laughs> this is not a place to judge. That's Although the intervention for Scott will take place. Next Tuesday. Well, I did notice well, on well, camera. Okay. Next Tuesdays are special on uh, on 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 heroin. Uh, the intervention for Scott is three weeks from tonight. <laughs> what's what's wrong with heroin? So as long as oh. the thing where okay, so I was at oh, that's the, cocaine. You know what? I got it mixed up. I feel bad now. You can also <laughs> snort heroin, but I advise against either one. <laughs> hey, all right. So as long as Scott doesn't do it, I went to a a late night panel at the anime con and it was drinking and dragons, but one of the guys started drinking a bit too early and up passed out on the floor. So as long as Scott doesn't do that, it's all okay. <laughs> oh, you missed that one episode about the lighthouse. I think I must have. I, I mean, have not yeah. seen that. One. We just had to yell through his computer to finally get his uh, uh, wife to come in and turn off the computer. <laughs> it was pretty bad. Poor Scott. Oh man. All right, now that that's done, let's actually get to our our topic for tonight and that is DTs. Me. Oh. Oh yeah. lord. <laughs> Ooh, you are so big. So absolutely huge. Wow. I just got to say gosh, we're all really impressed down here. You mean you? Oh shucks. So the first, uh, for the third, first thing, da, da, ba, 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 ba. that's what happens. Carol, when... we gave you the script. Just read off of it. It's okay. The intervention is for Scott, <laughs> not you, Carol. So the first, uh, the first part of this topic is we gotta talk about gods and their role in D and D, their various roles. So the first one I will throw out there, and thanks to Frank. It would be the one shot. They're rolling a one shot. How would you use them? I mean. Well, I think they're <laughs> supposed to really just judge the game and give rulings based on what people do. Sometimes they run the bad guys and that kind of stuff, obviously. All right, Cal, you go first. Shit. Do you have anything else? Ha, 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 ha. Hey, hang on. Hang what on, was on. the question? Do you remember the question? <laughs> DD's their role. Right, so this is this first section is their role in D and D, and the first part they're of that. They're one shots, Carol. One Come on, I've been listening, and paying attention. One shot. Stop trying to talk over me, please. I'm trying to give no. you the answer that you asked me to give. Can I just be me? Thanks. <laughs> I'm not muted. Okay, that's good. Uh, uh, so as far as for one shots. Um, if they don't play an integral part of the one shot, um, for example, I've got one where um, the players have to fend off uh, a, a god king from a pantheon city. Um, if it's not something like that, then it's really going to be about what the players make of it. Um, gosh, Blake, I forget what your character's name is. Uh, Agma. One? Prudence? Prudence, thank you. Yeah. It starts with a P. I know oh, that. Yeah, all of mine start with a P. Yeah. Yeah. Be, my, my next druid is going to be called Pussy Feathers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's but, awesome. uh, you have Blake, who has Prudence, who very vehemently inserts, I'm a cleric, I'm doing what my god wants me to do. Bam, and with that, it, it's mostly who brings it up, really. Because otherwise they're there, they don't get involved, kind of. Yeah, he's all, yeah but she don't, She also doesn't really approach him as a, as a I, I don't think I've ever even tried divine intervention with her. She, like, like Ogma, she treats Ogma as the, the voice in the back of her head as opposed to an actual entity. 
Yeah. I, and that might have to be talked about later about how your deity's role in the world itself when you create it. I mean, I like to have a difference between a warlock patron whose job is to interfere, interfere, interfere. I am the NPC that is going to tell you what you are going to do, as opposed to the cleric where they don't try to get involved because they could blow your mind and kill you instantly or something along those lines. And they have, they have other things to be occupied with. Nice taco, dear. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll go to David next. Well, uh, well, I mean, I, I think uh, Blake and uh, Kyle hit it on the head. Uh, it depends on how the divinity gets uh, injected into the game. Like, if it's not already built in, like, uh, like there's some kind of divine mythic quest or something like that, or uh, something is uh, driving one of the 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 your players on. Uh, a divine mission or anything like that. A lot of people really don't think about deities or divinity in it, uh, other than your clerics or paladins relationship with, with their deity. But um, like, for example, I mean, I, I'm in a campaign right now and uh, the character that I'm playing was a warlock, but he left his patron. And now that patron it, who is a divine patron is punishing him, uh, you know, with a little madness or something like that. So, but uh, things like that can be built into your your one shot, you know. Um, like Blake mentioned, divine intervention. You know that that that's a good point to to bring up. Uh, if there is something dire in the game, uh, the character that I played had something to where he had to go back to his patron and ask for help. So, and in turn, he has to prove himself. But in the meantime, here, you're punished. So, so that's just one example I can think of of how to inject uh, deities into your game. Oh, that's cool. That's, that's a good answer. Um, Blake, do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, I would say that, especially in a one-shot type scenario, it's you're not really going to be focusing on the lore of your world unless yeah. it's a, unless it's unless it's a like how we treat Cathaway. Cathaway is kind of our, our hub world for all of our one shots. Uh, you know that there are we have our recurring characters, so to so to speak. Um, or if you're doing say a convention one shot, which watch the between the roles last week about that, where lore can kind weeks, of be an important weeks. thing. <laughs> Ten weeks. weeks was it? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, it, as far as one shots go, I think that the, that the deities and all that probably aren't going to be too uh, influential into into this scenario, unless you're actually having them. It, unless the scenario that you're setting up is one that is directly influenced by them. Um, and it would also, unless, of course, again, you have your characters that are driven by, by their uh, deities, where they get their abilities through divine means, like your paladins and your clerics. Um, and that comes all down to the player, how much they're wanting to put into it, how much they're wanting to not put into it. Uh, that kind of gets back into that whole alignment conversation that we always keep trying to dance around but never quite want to have. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, how many of these murder hobo deity or clerics that worship the god of or the goddess of healing and and truth and harmony probably should still be getting favor from that deity. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey Blake. We just had that certain incident of divine intervention in a one shot. Or a two shot. Well, and that I believe was that was a four shot. I was playing a genuinely good and lawful character. Four shot. Yeah, that's right. It was well, technically, it was a four shot, but we did as two twos. <laughs> Felt like a one shot too. But yeah, the we, ballerina we, shot. Two twos. Yeah, yeah. Two two yeah. two two. <laughs> that was. But yes, and, and, and in that, uh, what was what? But uh, we were all given pre-generated characters. I elected to give my. There was no information given on the deity. Uh, 
because my character was an Asimar, I said, okay, well, my deity is one of my parents. I rolled, I hadn't eaten, so I said it was my mother. So I was really hoping it would have been my dad so that I could have done the Barbara Streisand every fucking time, but nope. Papa, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man! But, but but no. So we established that, that it's my mother. So my mom would come and kick the shit out of your ass if I prayed hard enough. Um, but she was also, I think, what we established. In addition to being a goddess of war, she was also a goddess of coprophilia. So <laughs> all of my all of my uh, my my, my uh, spiritual guardians and my spiritual weapon were essentially just shit long diapers on these little fat cherubs. <laughs> oh, that was so good. Oh that, my god. I, and, and, and that was all and that was that was all again just off the cuff. But I'm I'm like I saw the character and I saw how I saw the scenario and I said I'm okay I'm going to actually play this as a good lawful character. How can I still try and incorporate that into a way that's going to be interesting to me? It was and, great, yeah. and, there you go. <laughs> Also, the fact that you did cast Divine Intervention at level 10 and it worked was, I still can't believe you pulled that off. It's what? It's and, 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 under and, 10. Well, and, and from, the, from, from, the, from this, like, just how rare that, that triggers. Yeah. It should be more powerful, but I, I, I do, I, I, I absolutely love how Scott handled it. I think that that was a very appropriate response yeah. to that. I think that was, especially because I was trying to come up with it on the fly. You did. It was awesome. It was one of the more, it's something I probably will not forget. That was, it was that amazing. And I've played a lot of games. So I'm going to go, I'll add one to this. I do remember a one shot that my bestie uh, created as a con game. And he actually, this is sort of going to harbor, toward, this is sort of going to go towards even one of the later uh, part, points of this discussion. But he actually did, he actually created a one shot where the PCs would go fight Orcus. Because he had the Orcus mini and he wanted to use it. <laughs> so, and then oh, the funny part of that was he actually forgot to bring it until he was halfway to the con and had to go home and get it. But yeah, he, ba he basically, we had to fight, and Orcus is a god. So you can do that. You can make an evil god with a bunch of good PC, you know, high level PCs. And you can do that as a, you know, as a one shot. So that's all hard. That's a, that kind of harkens to the gods as monsters, which is a little later on. Um, all right. Then the next part, the next one of those, of course, is gods in campaigns. How would you put it in a campaign? And I think, let's see, I'll start with, I'll start with our new person, uh, David. Okay. What would you uh, do? Well, uh... I would probably have it linked to character's backstory, actually. Um, somehow, uh, I don't know, perhaps uh, some divine intervention or some revelation uh, occurred to them in their backstory. And that would be a good way to inject it into your campaign and just make it an ongoing theme that perhaps uh, their adventure is a journey of discovery, getting to know that deity. And then... Uh, essentially, uh, things coming out of it uh, with that relationship, uh, powers, things like that. I don't know. That that's one of the things that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, like I said, uh, the campaign that I w that I was in, and one of the things uh, deities weren't really brought up until uh, my character was uh, playing. Uh, a warlock, but he was so multi-classed uh, that he was ineffectual and all that. So the way that we re-rolled it and stuff like that, it ended up to where uh, warlock wasn't even his main class anymore. Uh, and again, like I said, that affected his relationship with the deity because the patron was an actual deity. So, so, so that's an ongoing uh, thing with his backstory because. Uh, something come, uh, coming up in an event uh, that he has to uh, deal with later in the backstory, he's going to need the deity's help. So uh, the DM has been really good about it. And um, yeah, she's the one that's been 
and kind of incorporating this in slowly. So that I would imagine that that would be a good way to do it. Uh, if I could ask a follow up just to get some fresh blood input on this. Sure. Uh, David, what, how, how uh, important and how intense do you feel that char the character backstory is to a campaign? Do you think that's something that you should flush out ahead of time or let it kind of develop as you go along? Because we we all know we all know what each of us think, but I'm curious to see what some of you think. <laughs> well, I think a backstory you should have an established backstory, but uh, it should be organic to where it kind of grows uh, with uh, different paths that uh, you know. Ultimately, you're at the hands of a DM, and it you know basically depends on how creative they can be with your backstory and facilitating. Well, yeah, but, I, but I asked you your opinion. Well, I mean, I'm still discovering, so I haven't really DM'd a major campaign or anything. Gosh, like David, well, come uh, on. Not even from a DM perspective, even as a character. <laughs> how, like, do, is that something that you put a lot of effort and thought into? Is that something that you'd like for your DM to incorporate? Or is that something that you don't really put too much effort into? I'm a prolific writer. So when the DM asked for our backstories, I must have gave like a like a four or five page backstory. When I, My man, all right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's okay. Hey, you should join the murder hobo campaign, Frank. <laughs> yes. I mean, it worked for it worked for Carol. Just say so you're in the campaign now. Yeah. <laughs> well, Josh, it didn't work like that. I still can't believe I'm in the campaign. Right. I don't think Frank will want. I don't know. He never knows. Frank said he could cram uh, a lot more players up there. So. Oh, I know Frank can cram a lot of things in a lot of places. <laughs> Seventeen, to be exact. <laughs> right, we'll Talking about the places, not the things. Yeah, obviously. All right, Blake. He's a skilled man. Blake, how about your opinion on uh, uh, God's role in a campaign? Okay. Uh, again, I, I, I think that there's still a, a holdover to my previous response of it's uh, still a lot of player focused. Uh, if you don't have any divine players or, or, or divinely motivated or inspired characters, uh, it, it can be something that maybe you as a DM want to reevaluate if you're trying to make it heavily focused on that because it, it, someone who's playing a character that is getting it's like a warlock. I, 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 I love that example too, to come up with something else that's getting, that's drawing their power from something that's, that's, that's having to create uh, a, an environment around itself. If you all of your characters aren't necessarily, if, if they're all fighters that are just there to sword and board and beat the shit out of shit, maybe, maybe, reevaluate how much lore you're putting into the environment because they're not really going to be getting as much out of it as you're thinking they should be and you're going to be disappointed. Um, but if you have players that are very much into the lore, that want to explore, that have, uh, that have novellas as backstories, that have, uh, <coughs> that, want to, that want to do downtime activity, I think throwing the gods and at least the impact that the gods have made on your uh, environment, on your, on, 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 on where you currently are in your time in history and your place where, you know, your scenario, that's the word I'm looking for, your scenario. I think that throwing in some backstory at the very least, uh, you know, it's like this, you know, how did this come to be? This was the goddess of creation. She, Weefed and now all of a sudden there's <laughs> over here. Yeah, throwing that kind of stuff in for color, I think, can be very beneficial. But as to how much the gods directly impact things, can be troublesome uh, because you're going to have people trying to kill the gods because they can't because we've had this discussion before, when, as soon as something has stats, it can bleed. And if it bleeds, we can kill it. So actually making them interactable is not something that I would advise right out of the gate unless you think that that's something your characters are going to be able to handle. I would otherwise, I would say let them sit in their ivory towers and, and 
just it's be sources of inspiration. So it's not bad. I said it depends. Uh, it depends on things too. Like in the campaign, I, it's funny. I'm in a campaign where I have a paladin. Uh, it's my Tuesday night game. Oddly enough, it's the same guy who did the Orcus one shot. Well, one of the things we are fighting is the cult of Orcus. Um, but of course, my, it's, <laughs> this is weird. Okay. My mother is my, fo I'm an Asimar paladin and my mother's my focus too. She is a powerful angel who will come down and kick the shit out of things. Although I've kind of asked her. You wish you had Benny Smith <laughs> skills. <laughs> I've asked her not to come down due to reasons um, in my character's backstory. Uh, all right. Yeah, that, that's what you say when you roll a 99 on your divine intervention. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I asked her not to show up, guys. It's, it's cool. Yeah, we don't need her help now. Gosh, Mom, go away. <laughs> there, there is, there You're embarrassing me in front of my friends. Gosh. <laughs> There is White snake isn't cool anymore. <laughs> no, there's something in her backstory where um, I'm not gonna. I'm not saying at this point because literally nobody knows it yet. So, did you come up with that ahead of time or on the fly, Carol? What? Did you come up with that aspect ahead of time or on the fly? Uh, ahead of time, we actually for that game we all went to the um, one. Of, I can't remember which D and D book it is, but it has. The very extensive backstory thing where you just roll it up. So for fun, that's what we did. We rolled up the backstory, and then my DM took, you know, took what I had, and he came up with 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 that. As I said, it will go be. So, so you you guys essentially seeded your pantheon, and your DM decided how it had impacted. Well, I mean, I mean, not everybody is really. I'm pro at the moment. Let's see. Yeah, at the moment, I'm the most religious person there. I, we do it. We have a warlock, but it's not a god. He doesn't have a pact with a god. It's a fey pact. And that's a very interesting relationship because he's in love with his patron. Um, I'm the only, said at the moment, I'm the only like religious one there. We had, we did have a grave card to start with, but unfortunately he got burned out on gaming and pretty much stopped gaming. And no, it wasn't our fault. So, Kyle. so, so I guess, I guess my follow up to that then would be uh, yeah. how many other deities were populated into this environment then that you're talking about, where you were, where you essentially created the ones that you're. That no, I, well, he created. Or at least the one, at least the one. But basically, he's not. Uh, DJ is using the just the normal D and D pantheon out of the book. So I mean, my my yeah. God, Taylor. My mother is an angel of Paylor. Okay. So that's how, it, but yeah, no, we're basically using the normal D and D gods for it. He didn't make up his own pantheon. Yeah. He's just using that. All right, Kyle, it's to that. Do you need me to repeat the question? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. But how would you use a God in a campaign? How would I use a God in a campaign? Sure. Um, it really depends on what the campaign as, as or arc is. different about. holes. <laughs> you can't beat Frank 17, so <laughs> that's as godlike as I can come, unfortunately. Uh, uh, again, Blake makes a great point where it really is going to be pushed by your players on how they want to interact. Um, and a lot, there can be a bit of metagaming, too. Um, I have played with devout atheists who, when they built their fighter, if you, as a cleric, try to cast Guidance on them or any sort of healing spell, the fighter will kill your character. I've heard of that. Wow. <laughs> it was not a pleasant thing, and the new guy wasn't aware of that, and he never came back. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, the, those stories are true, I'd like to confirm. <laughs> um, and then... Um, yeah, no, because gods are very complicated. I mean, that's why we have so many different religions, a lot of agnostic people, a lot of atheist people. And I can't say that they sh should really be simplified um, just solely on the DM's decision. Unless you are making your homebrew and you want the entire world 
to be created how you want it to be, um, then you probably should leave the gods alone and maybe steal from a different pantheon and let the players dictate how they want to be involved. I have had a zealot barbarian who's been gifted power by a god, but he's never talked to her or anything like that. He draws little symbols and destroys things on occasion to kind of experience that divinity, but so far the only thing he gets is a rage. Um, I had a character He's that talking about a Dewey Carol. Duh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Duh. Uh, I recently had a character who died named San, who again, not a very religious person, but he was inducted into an order uh, and thus was a cleric in that sense. And then he, I've was, had, a, he was a cleric of, of, of one of the gods of commerce, wasn't he? Commerce, economy, Joaquin, I think is the pronunciation. Yeah, yeah I think oh, so. D&D, God of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well. Yeah, and um, so really it's up to play. I mean, I uh, again, I have a fighter who is religious in his tenets. He could be a paladin, but he's not. I find that religion is a great way as a PC to kind of help flavor a character as well. Um, but really as a DM let your players decide what they're comfortable with um, and then try and push it a little bit here and there, I think. But um, as far as that, I mean, after that... I'll I'll, I'll go ahead and chime in there. One of the things that Frank does do, I'll take the advantage of him not being around, is he does like to create his own and he has usually a very limited and unusual assortment of choices that- I think he uses a random generator. He, 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 he does, he, and, and, and I, can't, I can't fault him for that. He, he, yeah, puts he's a lot of work, he puts a lot of work into it, and that's- I know, well, he Hey, actually, I have a great character because of it, I think. Right. He, but, he, but, actually, he actually says he does have another pantheon, because I was joking with him today via email about that. I'm like. I'm really trying to convince you that you need a really kick butt, you know, pantheon for Phil, but he put so much work into it. But he's like, he actually says he does have a, a real pantheon somewhere that he's not using for a campaign because you're, I'm sorry. I just, he uh, doesn't I, want I, I, the I've players him, to ruin the pantheon. Up three different pantheons from this generator. <laughs> I added so, a guy to but, it. but, but, but what I was saying though, it's, it's, it, it can make things a little bit limiting for player concepts if you're trying, because they're usually very unusual combinations that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It it can, it can force your creativity, but if you're trying to roll up a cleric, okay, I want to be, I want to be a life cleric, but the goddess of life has been rolled up to be a, 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 a seductress who only is worshipped in cloisters underground, and it, 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 I, I would say it, for someone starting out, go ahead and come up with an established pantheon, like you said, Carol. And if your characters have another concept and that they want to insert in, try and work with that because that's how Prudence has always come in. I, I don't think Ogma has ever been anywhere that she has been, but she she is the Metatron of Ogma. I don't think Agma is much of a Nazi either, as far as <laughs> oh, eugenics. Well, no, she, she, no, 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 no. She's not opposed <laughs> to eugenics. She's opposed to anything taking knowledge from her. <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, I do want to get to a little bit on creating pantheons. Um, I'm going to skip the last couple parts there. And well, let me add one more thought to this as well. And I just kind of thought about it. Um, yeah. When you are creating your campaign, picture it as a Pixar movie, in which case there are little bits and pieces here and there, and that should be the gods in your world or how they interact. It's not something that's there until you're like, oh, hey, why does that license plate say A113? Oh, well, it has to do with this, in which case, there you go, your players can go and find the lore on that if the gods are easter eggs is what you're saying thank you that's the word I was thinking of 
That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. That's a great point, too. Drink, Carol. Drink. It's a great idea. Scott, wherever you're watching this, drink uh, now. <laughs> oh, oh, you can take comfort in the fact that you know he is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I actually, uh, Taryn has created, I've created a God for Taryn because <laughs> nothing really worked in that list you gave me. Sorry. Oh, come but, on. You're look. limiting yourself. No, I no, I saw a couple of things that were I think were missing in that list, um, and that gets that actually gets into creating a pantheon and how uh, big it should be. What? Well, yes, I was going to say the first question is what aspects do you personally consider important when creating a pantheon or a god? Even uh, I'll was, I'll was start with you, Kyle. If you're going to create a pantheon, you have to have the creative story. Every religion has it in some fashion or another, whether the world is a giant turtle in an astral sea or whether God built it all in six days and then kicked up his feet and you're, had you're, a beer. You're, 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 you're talking about Stephen King, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> um, unless, of course, you decide to go a different route, too. I've, gods are a big thing. If you and they are an actual thing in a world, unless you decide not to be, and so chances are they were around for the creations where chaos, primordial forces, were um, laid to rest by civilization and by man. Uh, if you were to go Zeus and Kronos, um, as far as their importance, um. I don't know because diff well, what I do like a big pantheon consider, to say. It's not whether I consider it a pantheon. What do you? What aspects of a pantheon or of a god do you consider important? Like, what should we throw into the mix? What do you think? Like, all right. So, example, like a portfolio obviously is important. Sure, that's the sort of thing. What else would you consider important for people to know about the gods of the pantheon? Pick either. Well, a, this is a big question, and we probably should have done creating a pantheon as a whole show, in my opinion. <laughs> we could, I mean, we could. I mean, I tried to convince Frank and Carol you weren't doing a good job of it either, so, uh, but... What by Frank's... I more or less went by this, but what Frank gave me. I just added a couple things at the end. We could. I mean, there's only... It might be fun to just cover an episode. So we could table that. I mean, there's only about seven. There you go, Frank. Next Tuesday, we got the show for you. There you go. Again. <laughs> yeah, no, I, um, first of all, if you're going to create a pantheon, you have to answer important questions. How powerful are they in the universe? Did they Were they a part of creation? Um, can mortals become gods, and can they kill them? In Faerun, you have Kelimvor, you have Bane, Siric, a lot of these gods kill murder each other to gain the domains of other player uh other gods or become gods themselves vecna is a big character in D, &D lore who is a wizard and then a lich and eventually gains so much power that he uh becomes essentially a god um except they gave him stats so you can kill him um, <laughs> which we mentioned earlier before um, and so a lot of those questions have to be answered first before you even go with portfolios. Um, once you figure out generally that idea, then you have to say, okay, the player's handbook, Xanathar's guide, and let's throw in homebrew something there. And those are the domains I have. These are how the gods fit into those. And from there you can kind of build, um, and then you have to decide whether each race has their own pantheon or not. Uh, my personal idea on the whole thing is make the gods ascendable. And as an interesting idea, most gods have a favored weapon, sacred weapon. I would make the weapons the gods themselves. And then as, so we'll say that one of the weapons is a scythe, uh, death, grave, domain, and one day, Kelimvor had just happened to cross this scythe that was on the ground, became such a heroic figure that he eventually 
gained powers of a god until eventually someone came in behind him, killed him, and took the scythe from him. And it just so happened to be an elf. And that's where the elf god of death comes from. It, it's, it's the Dread Pirate Roberts approach. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and which is why I really like that you can ascend to godhood. You can take a god down and become a god yourself. And I might do that approach, especially if I want the gods to be involved in the campaign in some way. That way you can make them more human, which is something we understand ourselves because we are, um, as opposed to a nameless, faceless deity that, well, how are they supposed to act? I don't know. I've never met a god before. <laughs> I haven't had enough LSD. I'm sorry. You've looked at yourself in a mirror. Ah, oh, <laughs> I'm blushing now. <laughs> Show us them titties again. <laughs> hey, it's Mardi Gras in my hometown. <laughs> uh, what is that day, Mardi there Gras? You go. <laughs> um. All right. So I'm gonna go. Let's. I'll go to Blake next. So I'm switching uh, up. There. I, I would I would start by saying, along the lines of what Kyle was saying, it's good if you're going to have them as key figures, give them avatars. They can only interact with uh, with uh, humanoid characters with 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 the earthen or the the, the material plane in an avatar form, uh, so that 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 hermit living on top of the mountain isn't uh, just crazy, crazy Tim the Enchanter, that's actually, that, that is the embodiment of Ogma. Uh, you can kill him here, but he does not die. He goes back to, and he will reincarnate, he will become, he, he will show up somewhere else, but you can no longer gain any knowledge or anything that he had to, uh, his influence has been temporarily disabled, uh, is how I would approach something like that. Uh, I would say that when you're trying to decide how big of a role that they play, I would say the first thing you need to do is ask your characters how much of a role they want them to have. Um, that would be a session zero type question. Uh, say, all right, uh, what are you guys thinking about playing? If no one's, if, if you got a whole bunch of divine characters that want to come up with something, Ask for their input. What do you want? What's your idea? What do you want your deity to be? And then see that into uh, how you're going to create it, as opposed to kind of coming up with a coming up with a you know throw everything against the wall and see what sticks kind of mentality. Uh, I would say that uh, I, I I do like the idea that you can ascend. Uh, because it gives your higher level characters something to work towards uh, if they become either uh, renowned or, oh, I can't remember what the word I'm looking for is, but uh, uh, bad, bad renowned uh, enough that they can empower, because you're basically a god once you hit level 12 anyways. Uh, Maybe. So, <laughs> but Some you, say you, level you, five, but yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right. So I will cut to David. No, 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 no. You, you, cut out, you cut out with what you were saying, Carol. What were you saying? No, I'm going to cut to David because we're really running short on time. We're going. Okay, going. fine. Yeah, we, yeah. We are, we are coming back to this next week. So I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll say. I'm going to come back to this in two weeks when I can actually host again. No. <laughs> no, one week. No. Yeah, you, no, we no, have no. already set the topics, Carol. I'm sorry, we can't bend the world just for you. Hey, you know what you, you know what you can do? Be here instead of there. Those are choices, people. Life's full of them. Hey, if you're upset about it, Carol, make your own D and D show. Hey, no, Frank actually already has a topic for next week. That's not this one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I actually saw a conversation today on um, on a web channel with uh, Jim Davis and Jeremy Pruitt. Um, web DM, they, web DM yeah. boy, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, they, they said DM. that the problem that people run into with pantheons is that they all start to become generic after a while. 
you know, uh, whether there's only so many stories to tell. Exactly. And they said, well, why even go with the Pantheon? Uh, you can either not have divinity in it, but th that kind of, uh, kind of shoots the whole, uh, cleric divinity in the foot with that. But they said one thing that you might want to try is monotheism and kind of build after that with like ascensions or a God, you know, uh, mingling with the mortal and their offspring become gods, you know, things like that. So those oh, were the kind of, please. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, demigods, you know, there is a rank system to, to divinity. So, Oh God. <laughs> I love that movie so much. <laughs> All right. So, if, do you have anything else, or is that all? No, no, that was it. I just thought that was uh, pretty an, an interesting. And also, a very interesting it, point to bring up, though. Yes, very, very something, and that's something that a lot of people don't even necessarily think about when they think about a world of magic and wonder. Is that no? There's, there's God. There's, there's God. Every, it, 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 the God of life, the God of death, the God of war, the God of the economy. That's that, that, that's God. Yeah. You could always do what uh. Oh gosh, what is it? Chernabog and uh, gods with duality, one of summer and light, one of darkness, like, like, like that, but they're like both hell. the same like, thing. Like hell. Well, like well yeah, yeah. Or uh, a light and dark struggle, uh, pretty much. You know, forces, forces of light, forces of darkness, you know, that kind of thing, you know. But um, yeah, there were a lot of interesting there's a lot of interesting things that you could do with either monotheism or whatever, because uh, one of the things they brought up is like Eberron, for example, there, there are no deities in Eberron, at least the original in, uh, incarnation of it. So, you know, but, but I think the gods make a, make a game a more, more interesting, you know, uh, to have like some kind Easter of divinity. In it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So I, I am going to go ahead and real quick, Carol, I'm going to throw in this. Frank is, is, is whispering in my ear. Uh, How's about, the tongue? What, what about some, why don't you think that people tend to bring real world religion into this kind of environment? Actually, is, that, is, is that potentially problematic at all? Well, obviously it can be, it can you be. know. I grew, but yeah, might I point out to you, there was a second edition uh, supplement book. Are you talking about the one that was all fucking? No. <laughs> oh, I have that one. Deities and Demigods, which had, at least I think it was Deities and Demigods. It was a long time ago. But there was one that had a lot of real world religions in it. So and that, absolutely has, that absolutely was acceptable, accepted in the past. And I think... If you have the right group of people that you know can handle it, absolutely. I don't see why you can't actually delve into that. Well, and then, Carol, don't you play Pathfinder? Don't they have an Egyptian where the old gods are the actual Egyptian gods? <laughs> um, I, I'm, trying to, oh, I'm trying to remember what freaking gods. <laughs> well, while she's thinking, I'll go ahead and say, if that is something, if that, is something that you are thinking about doing, run it past your players in session zero because exactly. one thing, yes. the one, thing, the one yeah. thing that we always try and harp on here and we haven't done it lately is you never know what experiences your players have had in their lives and you want to be careful about touching on a subject that you don't even realize might be a little more sensitive than it should be it's they true to be altar boys yeah uh, D and D has always run into a backlash, uh, injecting real world religion into it. I mean, in the beginning, the uh, when D and D was created, you know, just the mention of uh, other gods and stuff like that, there was a huge, yep. huge backlash. Satanic panic. Panic, 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 panic! Exactly. Get your T exactly. twenty, boys. So that's what you got to be Spirit careful about. <laughs> Yeah, we we're all a bunch of devil worshippers. I mean, you know, obviously it's not true and never really. Well, was Tom you, Hanks when movie. Kyle plays a war, when Kyle plays a warlock, he is. <laughs> Shh. Ah, all right. But, but so, like he said, a session zero thing. You got to run it past your players and see how they feel about it. Amen. All right. 
I'm going to go to final thoughts since we are slightly over time. Uh, we will definitely come back to this topic. It is This is a really, really interesting. It, it actually, uh, this went, is the third time we've been back to this topic. We always have new things to add to it. This is, this is a very, very in-depth topic. It's a, it's, I, I love this discussion. And we probably could go on another two more, three more hours on this. But unfortunately, it is slightly after nine. So final thoughts. Uh, so again, I'll start with I'll start with David. What'd you uh, throw him under the bus, Carol. Do it. <laughs> Come up with something, David, right now. It, wouldn't, it wouldn't be murder hobo if she didn't. <laughs> um, no, it wouldn't probably- be murder hobo if Kyle or I didn't. <laughs> nice. Absolutely. I can't wait for this weekend. No, I I think divinity, pantheon, gods, uh definitely I think they're I think they're needed in a campaign. <laughs> you know, it could be like Kyle said, just little Easter eggs here and there, but and then eventually work it in. But I think it adds the flavor, you know, to the game. So, flavor, flavor. Exactly. <laughs> So, so that's my thoughts on it. It's just like, you know, why not? You know? All righty, Kyle. Go to you. Huh? You. Any final thoughts? What was the question? Thoughts? I forgot. Do you have any, do you have any <laughs> thoughts at all in there? Or, or, or is there just air between these, you know, two? Like a strawberry flavored condom. <laughs> it's there to it's protect you. And... It's entirely useless. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> is that it oh god is that it i don't know i just wanted to come up with something like that as my final thought for once <laughs> did i do it right did i do it right you did it good uh, that's my seduction skills <laughs> all right blake you next there was a young sailor from brighton who remarked <laughs> to his girl you have a tight one she replied, oh, my soul, you're in the wrong hole, but there's plenty of room in the right one. <laughs> Lord. That's your final thought, huh? It must be I'm like- confused <laughs> now. <laughs> all, right, all right. Actually, I had a final thought that was actually related. Oh, right one as in the correct hole. Correct. Not <laughs> the right <laughs> one. No, 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 I was no, really no, confused no, there. No, no, there. No, perpendicular. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, I have a scar where I had a second hole in my ass, but I didn't think that was the same thing for everybody else. I thought I was an exception. <laughs> no, 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 that's that's one of the uh, rights of Americanism is you have that operation performed on you. And, oh. Yeah. Oh, friggin'. But, but, but my final thoughts on gods for the time being, it, it all comes down to session zero. Very Fair. important. Oh. I agree. I agree. Um, just one thing I just that popped in my head when we were talking about the stories of, you know, coming up with origin stories for gods. One particularly good one, it's one of the Pathfinder gods. It's Caden Kalian. Anybody who plays it will know what I'm talking about. But basically, his origin story was he got drunk, ended up in the maze, and ended up with the Starstone and became a god. But he was so drunk, he could not tell you how he did it. He just woke up with the star stone in his hand and didn't remember anything before. So that, to me, is a great way to ascend to God. And yes, he is. Drinking is in his pantheon, uh, in his portfolio, rather. Uh, Oh, is there a drinking uh, domain for Pathfinder? I might switch if there is. (laughs) I believe so. I was going to say, I think... Perpetua what it just found a new god. I don't <laughs> All right. The bad thing is I don't actually play a lot of clerics in Pathfinder. Um, I have one of Shane. All right, guys. That's the night show of Between the Rolls, the regular Pathfinder uh, podcast or Yay. Twitch streaming service. We'll see you in this coming Saturday. Uh, remember, <laughs> see us on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. You can see all the episodes with me in it, your god. I love you all out there. Until right. next time, folks. Good night. Oh, Sir Julio. Hey, all right. Oh, you know what, Kyle? You screwed Wait, it Frank, up. turn us off before Carol can cu- keep talking. <laughs> no, we're done, Carol. We are done. No, we're not. No, nope, it's off. It's off. Shut Trust up. me. Kyle, shut up.
<laughs> so you are, you happen to also forget that uh, we should be offering uh, people out there if they want a seat at our table, all they have to do is get in touch with Frank. You know Either. what? Frank should put that in the outline so I can say it instead of you next time. Yep. If you want to be on here, just touch Frank. So, um, but everything Just else pleasure is- each of his 17 holes. <laughs> For those of you that can't get enough of this campaign on Saturday. Ooh. That Saturday? I didn't see what Frank just wrote, but yeah, after I cannot. Well, wait. no, you can see him mimicking putting a gun to his head, Carol. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that says it all. I I can't. Guys, wait. this show is like a clown car of bullshit. It just keeps coming out, and you're just surprised <laughs> that it's it all fits in there somehow. How do they? I was, do so, I was so surprised when I started coming bullshit. Kyle, how do you do it? That's what I want to know. I'm a god. It just comes with, naturally. With, with, with panache. With panache. <laughs> All right. So as you said, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, uh, follow us on YouTube, for the archives, buy our tiny, stuff. Tiny URL, mhobo, whatever the fuck it is. Go buy swag. No, tiny URL, uh, RPG swag. That's it. There's no murder hobo in there. Believe it or not. And I said, uh, hopefully we'll see you for the campaign this week. I can't wait to find out how it's going to play out. Because uh, thanks, guys. I'm really screwed once again. <laughs> That's right. I got to kill you, Carol. She was asking for it. We all know it's going to happen. I'm going to talk my way out of it because I always You're going to talk your way into no. it deeper. Nah, I'll talk my way out of it this no, time. No, you won't. No, you, you haven't won't. talked your way out of that elephant. I am going to drag you down in the dirt. <laughs> Ass, you want me to wave my ass, Frank? All right, hold on.